guys, welcome back to Janie's Hippie Art, and I got a treat for you today. Okay, today I'm gonna I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna show you how I'm putting together a wind chime I'm making. Okay, let me show you what I'm making. Okay, let me flip you around. Okay, this green one here with the yellow with the white stripes, that's what I'm making. Okay, there's a black and yellow one behind it. <laughs> That's what I'm making. This is one that I had made for my friend Suzanne. I made one of these a while back and I let my friend Bevels put it in her yard way before our winter storms and it is still hanging. So that made me feel really good because I wanted to test a product. Okay, so these are the ones I got ready to make put together right now um, basically what you need to do this project oh what I what I need well for this version of a wind chime you need a tin can so I painted the tin cans I spray painted them solid color first then I hand painted this folky art design on them folk art design it's not fine art it's folk art uh, of a flower vine I did the same thing on this yellow one um, you can see the holes better here. I drilled a hole in the top and I drilled a hole, holes around the side. Then I took the CD I'm going to use and I drilled holes on the CD. I think y'all can see that. Okay. Drilled holes on the CD. Then I've got, I need super glue. You need a silverware or something so I got a spoon at the moment I don't know if I'm gonna use a spoon yet or not I don't know um, I made first I made the holes um, an indentation with these and then I went to the drill press and I drill pressed my holes you know drilled my holes with the drill press and then I did take a file and file down that inside edge here so that it doesn't cut my fishing line all right so after that was all done I have already, I have already, um, let me move this out of my way, get a couple things off my desk, um, I already cut out a bunch of shapes, I already cut out a bunch of shapes out of soda cans, that took a day or so, so here I've got little butterflies to hang off of them. Um, I need to cut out more circles, but I got circles here. I got big circles. And I got flowers. I got little flowers cut out. And I've got bigger butterflies. Let me pull this. And I have bigger butterflies. Okay, so I think I'll pull a bigger butterfly, a purple one, for this. I think we'll do the yellow one in the video. I think that's the one we'll do. And I think we will hang flowers and butterflies off of it. Because I don't have a lot of circles done up yet in purple. Kind of ran out of cans. So I have some purple. And you don't have to use soda cans. You can also use um, sequence, big sequences from the craft store. You can hang beads off of it. I might hang beads off of one of them. You don't have to use soda cans. Um, let me set this one aside. Put the green one aside and work on the yellow one. So you don't have to use that. Um, I do use a 9 millimeter jump ring to attach the um, hangy things from the CD and the can. And then I made these, uh, I don't know what they call them, but they're like, look like a miniature um, um, focus, focus, key, key ring. It's wrapped twice. Focus. 
Come on, focus. It's wrapped twice. I made these myself out of wire. And that's the ones I put on the ends of the fork. So maybe I'll do a fork because then I can show you how I bend the fork and everything. All right, let me do a fork. So let me put you on hold for a minute and put you up high on the tripod -y thing above me so I can show you guys what I'm doing. Okay, let's get started. All right. So I have my fork. All right, so do not use good pliers for this because I started to use my good um, jewelry pliers and realized I'm going to kill them. So I basically take the fork and I basically bend one tong. And you have to do this carefully because you don't want to overbend and break the tong. Bend one tong one way and then go to the other side and bend the other tong, I guess, up. Okay, so then I got this. So then I do the same thing. I grab it about halfway and I bend it a little bit. And then I go about halfway again and I bend it a little bit. And you can bend them towards the handle or away from the handle. I've done it on both, both ways. I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to go towards the handle on this one. And I go do them all the same direction. I just go ahead and turn the the prongs, and I kind of want to bend them almost all the way towards the. That's why you don't use your good good ones. I want to almost turn them all the way, just enough right here, so I can get a slip slip the uh, the um, this end. The jump ring things I made. The double. I don't know what they're called when they're not, when they're like a whatever. Just so I can slide that in there. So I want to keep bending it and just enough to get it in there. I mean, I've actually bent that one too far. This takes a little. See, I can just get it in there. That way, I can tighten it up. It takes a little bit of muscle to do this. Just a little bit. Just a little muscle. Oops, closed that one too far. And you want to keep going the same direction. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. You could go up and down, but I think aesthetically it looks better if you go up or down on all of them the same direction, basically. I mean, that's just my opinion. My phone's ringing, so hold on a minute. Let me go answer it. I'll be right back, guys. Be right back. Okay, you guys. It was just my son. All right, so. All right. I left you guys at turning these things. Okay, so basically you got to turn your your um, forks so that when you attach whatever you're going to dangle, you will have you'll have a dangle. All right, but before I do anything else, because this part takes a little bit of time, all right, I needed a way to keep this CD, because it has a big hole. My pinky can go in it. I needed a way to keep the CD from from moving around. Like, if I put it, put a string in it, it's going to just, it's going to go from side to side. You know, it's going to go from side to side. I didn't want that to happen. So I came up with the idea to take a big bead that will not go through the hole, and glue it to where most of the bead is on the top and a little bit of the bead is on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of bead there, a lot of bead on the top. And the way I found to do it, at first I used E6000, and that was just really messy. So I buy just a super glue from the Dollar Tree. I found that this is a time where you get it all over your fingers. I put some super glue on the bead and then I stick the bead in the hole. I try not to get any more on me than possible, but that's not going to happen. I line my bead up to get it as straight as possible 
and this is where you start getting super glue all over your fingers. Now, the super glue does do something to the plastic. It kind of like distorts the plastic on the CD, but that's okay. It kind of like melts it a little bit or something. All right, so I'm going to let that sit and hopefully dry. It will not be dry by the time I'm ready to use it. So I'm just going to set it aside, get it out of my way, and hope it dries enough to play with it in a few minutes. But if not, I'll have to pause the video and come back. So while that's doing that, let's go ahead and do the little danglies for the uh, fork. I have drilled a hole in this end of the fork too. So this will go inside the wind chime. It'll go inside. Um, I'm thinking about doing a decorative spoon that has a pretty handle. Think about doing it the other way and have the spoon handle come out. Not this spoon, but one of the ones with the prettier uh, handles. And then having that spoon in there for the noise maker. Now it doesn't make your typical normal dang noise. They don't make that. They make a different kind of noise. Let me show you what kind of noise they make. Because here is, they make that kind of noise when the wind hits them. So they make that kind of noise. So it makes a different kind of noise, but it still makes a noise. All right. You also will need fishing line. I use 40 or 50 pound fish line. And you would need some crimp beads. And a little bit bigger crimp beads that the fishing line can fit in. I do not know what size the crimp beads are. I just know they're a little bit bigger. Alright, so. Um, you'll need... I don't use the ones I made for this part. For the top of the spoon. Because, um... Well, can I? Use the one I made? Let me see. I made it out of thinner wire. Let me see if I can. Because if I can, that would be nice. I think I can. Okay, so you'll need a to attach the, the fork or spoon wherever you punch the hole. You need to attach it underneath. So you just put one of those, I don't know what they're called. It's, not, it's like the double jump ring, the double loop. I don't know what they're called. I don't know. Alright, so I've attached that because that's going to go inside the, the, the jar, okay? So let me get my fishing line. Now normally, I've been cutting my fishing line, but then I have to, I, I stick it through the hole and then I have to fight with it because I tend to pull it out of the hole. So this time I decided that I was just gonna leave it on the, on the thing. Oh, come on. I'm gonna leave it on the sp spool and just work with it and then put it where I want to put it. Alright, now you want to make sure you use cans that are not pop top cans. Like dog food. I was collecting all kinds of cans and then I realized the ones like dog food cans and any kind of can that has a pot pull it leaves an extra ridge on the inside that you can cut yourself on. So I don't use those cans anymore. Alright, so alright, you've got this. Now you need an anchor bead on the inside that keeps this from, that keeps your spoon or fork from hitting the top of the can. You need an anchor bead. I mean, if you want it that close up, you can. In fact, I could position this right here, basically, and take it right up there. Let me see if I can get it back in there and show you guys. I'm going to get it back in the hole and show you guys. I mean, I might do one that way. There's no wrong, there's no wrong or right, right reason how to do this. Let me see what it would do if I did that. Oh, why don't we do one like that? So you don't have to have the anchor bead. Why don't we just do that? Cause that would be pretty too. We're gonna do. We're gonna do one a little bit different. Okay. Okay. See, this is why we talk about things as we do them, so we can do them differently if we want to. So I had a. All right. So I've got a um, crimp bead right here. 
So you put the crimp bead on, then you run it through whatever you're going to hang, then you run the crimp bead, run, run the end back through the crimp bead. And I don't like to waste any product whatsoever. So I kind of go cl as close to the crimp bead as possible. All right, so. Um, do I want to still put a bead on there? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to try it without it. All right, where's my crimpers? Get my crimping tool. Because now you're just going to use, like, the regular tools you would use for jewelry. This is, like I said, this is the bigger crimp bead. So you're going to crimp that bead. Give yourself enough of a loop. All right, so I crimp the bead. I've got a crimp there. Now, I put a little bit of glue on my crimp bead. I just do. I don't, I just, I just always have, I do it with my jewelry, I do it with everything. I just put a little bit of glue on. Now, I'm going to cut away that excess little tab of fishing line. Just the excess. Now I can pull this through. And now I've got... Now, because I've, I've done this now, I'm going to have this bottom of this fork close to this, so I do want to use smaller little um, danglies. But each one of these are different. So that's the nice thing about doing them, is that each one can be different. I mean, it still makes a noise when it hits. That's not even with the danglies on yet. So, we pull that back out. We're going we're gonna to work on the danglies for this. Since we're not doing nothing with that yet, because we're still waiting for that bead to completely dry. So it's almost dry. So what I'm going to do, just to ensure that that stays, is this is what gets messy. I take a little more super glue and I put it around the top. I want to, I want to kind of make a seal. I don't put it on the bottom because if you do it on the bottom, you're going to have a sticky mess like I did last night. Because last night I was talking to my friend on the phone and I got sidetracked with what I was doing and I put glue on the wrong side and then I had a mess. So we'll let that sit and dry a little bit longer while we do this. Hopefully it's done. I've already picked out my two top decorative beads to go on the top. I put about two more beads on top. And I need three... One. I need three... Some sort of spacer bead type beads. You can use anything. You can use anything you want. You can use pearlized beads. I've been using up these silver beads. Um, you can use little crystals, you know, you can use whatever you want. Alright, so now let's do these. I need four of these little rings I made. I think I'll go with what do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Why don't I do two different color flowers? Why don't I do some little, I'm in Kentucky, let me do some L8 flowers. Just the green parts. Or the L8 can. And if you'll notice that my can, my, my cans have the writing and that's okay. So let me go with these th four, okay? For that bottom. Because they kind of go with the tones and the things. So then you need your little punchers again. And you just take one of the petals. And you punch a hole. Try not to get too close to the edge. But you just punch a hole in your petal. I don't know if you can see that. Just punch a hole in your petal. Just take your petal. And you punch a hole in it. Um, at this point, the... Um, I still don't encourage children playing with this, but at this point, this is not that sharp. I use the paper punch to punch these shapes out. But I still don't encourage you to have children be, be this supervised, please. So then I'm going to take my little ring 
and I'm gonna slide my little duty daddy on there, my little flower. I didn't know this is hard to see. I don't care how it goes on as long as it goes on. Just working around just like a keychain. One made. Don't force anything because you can rip this aluminum, believe it or not. When you've got a little hole this close to the to the um, edge. I think I think it can rip. But like I said, you can use big sequences. You can use beads if you want to for this. You know, you can hang anything you want off. You can hang charms off if you want to hang charms off. You could get baby sp smaller spoons and hang smaller spoons off of a fork. You know, if I did this and then hung small spoons off, you could hang small spoons off. I mean, shoot, you could even hang plastic spoons if you wanted to. You can hang anything you want off. Anything, any desire you want. When I use the bigger cans, I'm probably going to hang several, um, do a fork and hang a couple spoons off the fork. Just bend the fork prongs opposite directions. All right, so now I've got these done. So now it's time to attach these. Now, I like to make sure my, um, my charms are kind of hanging the same direction, at least on, on each side. It's an, it's, it's a, um, mental thing. <laughs> It's just, I'm going to go through and I'm going to just lock in that bend. Just going to squeeze that bend in so that hopefully this thing won't slide off in the wind. So I got them going that direction. It's a mental thing. So see now I'm going to go in and lock in my, I don't know if you can see that. I just don't want it to come undone. Then I'll do the same thing over here. Put my little dangly on. I feel like I'm doing this away from myself. Lock it in. So my danglies can't come off. And put the other one on. And then lock it in so it don't come off. And there we go. We had the little, it makes a little noise. It's not a big noise. It makes a little noise. So it makes a little bit of a noise. All right, so that's done. So now what I need to do See right here where it changed the color of it a little bit? It turned it white. It's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Oop, it's not totally dry yet. I just moved it and it just... So I got to let this dry. So while I'm letting this dry, I'll go ahead and do the charms on the bottom of this. Okay, so now... I'm leaving the big butterfly for the top. So I think I want to use... Hmm. Do I want to put flowers? I think I want to put flowers. Now, I have... I have some flowers. I think I'll... These came off of a odd soda can. I got some Yoohoo ones. So if I have... I need... One, two, three... I need six flowers. So I think I'm going to go with the writing on the Yoohoo because I don't really want the red from the Yoohoo so I think I'm going to go with either plain or the writing. I don't want red and orange. Well, I guess it don't really matter. We're going to use Yoohoo bottle jars, I mean Yoohoo flowers. Okay, so. And I do a mixture of of a uh, writing and non-writing. So we'll go ahead and use one colored one, this and red and that. Okay, so I got my flowers. It's 
going to be pretty no matter what. Then I think I'll do purple butterflies. All right, so now the same thing here. You're going to poke a hole in a petal. Poke the holes in your petals. I think these are pretty when they're all done. I do. Now, in this part, I use a 9mm jump, jump ring. I found it was harder to get that double ring in, um, I can't remember what those are called. I found it harder to get those in, you know, if you can get those, that would probably be even better because your um, piece might stay together better, but I found it hard to get it around the can. So I opted just to go with the 9mm jump ring. And basically, you just turn your jump ring, you slide it in the hole, but you want to make sure that when this falls down, your design is hanging down. So you want to put it, when you if you're going at it at this direction, you want to put it where the silver side is up and the and the color side is facing your um, can and then you just turn your jump ring got to make sure it's connected okay got to be careful cuz if you leave any kind of gap in that jump ring it's going to cause a little flower or piece to fall out. That's good. And I just go around and do that. All the way around the can. Turn the jump ring. Slide it on. Put my little flower on. And repeat process. This has been a very fun project. I almost shut that there. far enough apart. Now you could, you if you didn't have jump rings, you could actually make the holes bigger and on everything and you could actually attach these things with like hemp or string or even, you could even use yarn. If you want to do this with a child, you could do this with, um, like I said, you could hang anything. You could even take a plastic container and put holes in it and make a wind chime out of plastic. You know, this was just my idea to use can a can. And I didn't even get all bent out of shape over the bend right here in the can. To me, it's all part of the recycle effort or whatever. I even had trouble getting, I don't know if you can see it, I even had trouble getting the label off right there. I, I, I mean, I worked at it without using a, a, a sanding machine. I just went with it. I think it gives it a little more character. Because like I keep saying in the past, art is supposed to be fun. When you start stressing out over art, you need to walk away from it for a minute. Your project's going to drive you nuts. You need to walk away and go back to it. This is supposed to be a blood pressure and stress reliever to do art. It's not supposed to be a stress causer. Alright, so now that part's done. Yes, starting to dingle some more. All right, let's see if we've got a finished. I don't, oh, it's still dripping. See, I'm gonna have to come back in a little bit. I'm gonna have to come back in a little bit and finish the rest of it. So I'm gonna have to put you guys on pause and come back because 
I can't continue until this is dry. And this is taking a few minutes. So I gotta I gotta stop and let that dry. But we're we're almost there. We're almost there. That's the noise it's gonna make. And it looks pretty spinning around. It's pretty hanging up. Alright, so I'm gonna set this aside. We're going to come back to this after this dries and we will finish. Okay, you guys, in a bit. I got to put you on hold for a few until that thing dries. Okay, everybody, we are back to finish this project. Okay, I believe now this is dry. But you see how the super glue kind of changes the color around the bead, but I don't think that's going to matter. It kind of fuses them together, so I think it's going to be okay. That's why you want to let it dry and not pick it up so you have less drippage, but it's not going to matter. All right, so that being said, let's get on to the next step of this project. All right, I've got my lid, I've got my top. So I'm going to go ahead and start stringing. I think I said I was going to use butterflies. So let me pull out butterflies and I need two, four, six, eight butterflies. So let me go to my little thing. Now I could use purple butterflies, which might look nice, or I could use, I even cut out these little stripes. So I think... I'm going to go with purple butterflies. So I said I needed eight of them. Eight little purple, purple butterflies. Okay, I believe that is eight. And I like to punch them all on the same wing. So I pick a wing and punch them. I don't have them go in different directions. You can do whatever you want. I don't. I punch either on the right or the left wing. Again, I'm just punching holes in the wing of the little butterfly. This is going to be pretty. Just punching my holes in the wing of my butterflies. I've already picked my finishing beads. I don't know if I told you all that because I had to stop. Yes, I did tell you because I told you to use spacer beads. I've had multiple phone calls since I last talked to you guys. And now on the big one that finishes the top, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and punch my holes now. I punch a hole basically towards the tail and towards the head. So now I've got holes punched towards the tail and towards the head. Now you could go back if you wanted to and re-punch it the opposite direction. It might squish down those, yeah, it squishes down those little pieces that stick up if you're worried about them. So, there we go. Alright, so now let's take our jump rings and attach our... Can I use these? Let me see if I can. Well, let's see, I can't. Let's do our jump rings. Attach, we need eight of them. I try to pull out what I need because I tend to spill and I don't have a mat down. Gotta find the crack on this. Okay, 
again, you want to make sure when you do this that your design is so that when it falls down, you see the color. So here's the top of my piece. I'm going to put them on so that when they flip over, they hang down. But if you want the silver side out, do the silver side out. If you want to take time and, and sand off with a piece of sandpaper, take time and sand off the color, sand off the color. Because you can, you can put alcohol inks on these to... Uh, and I'll show that another time, how you can actually take and um, sand off the color on the pop cans, soda cans, and you can um, uh, uh, paint them with alcohol inks. Now you could pre-put these on, like put it on first and then attach it. You could do that too. Just whatever you're comfortable doing. I just tend to do it the other way because I tend to have dyslexia. And I tend to put things on backwards if I'm not careful. So I want to make sure that my when they hang, when it hangs, I want to make sure my butterflies show. But you could go ahead and put them on. You see now I got to do it the other way because it would have hung the wrong way. easier for me to put it on and then put my piece on. Ooh, I think there's still a sticky spot on that glue. I just felt glue. Yes, I did. I felt glue. Like I said, I did this Okay, I made one of these when I was up in Kentucky last, last October. Okay, and I said to Bevels, it wasn't one of them. I just made one with all the elements I would have done in making them. I painted it. I clear coated it. I strung it. I used the same fishing line and everything. I did everything the way I was going to do it, but I didn't really care if it was the prettiest thing because I just wanted to see how they would hold up. And, um... During these last storms that Kentucky had, the three ice uh, snowstorms that we had unexpectedly, that wind chime at my friend Bevel's, it, it, when it, when it, when there was icicles, it was frozen straight, <laughs> but when it thawed out, it thawed out and started spinning just like it, like the day we hung it. So she was my test dummy. She was my test field. So... I could find out if they were going to hold up because I thought they would because I try really hard to think about the quality. I don't want to make something that I won't sell. Okay. If I make something, I want to make it to where if I was the purchaser, would I buy that from that vendor? You know, is it quality that I would buy? You know, so I don't want to make a shoddy cheesy uh, item because I want to make sure it's something I would buy. See how that looks? I don't know if y'all can see it. I kind of went with the color on the top and the shiny on the bottom thinking that if light did hit it, it would reflect off of the, off of the danglies and be pretty. So that's my thought process. All right. So now that I've gotten to that point, okay, so I remember I'm still attached to my spool of uh, fishing line. I'm still attached to it. So I need to judge about how much spot, how much I want it to hang. I think that looks about good from my thumb to there. That still allows me to hang my beads on top and my thing. So I'm going to cut just above my thumb. I'm done with that spool. Now I'm going to string on my CD. There we go. My top's on. Then I'm going to grab my beads that I put aside. And I put aside this iridescent kind of bead, thinking it would pick up some of the colors and the tones. I'd like to have a shiny bead somewhere. Um, or maybe I'll put crystals or something. You know, crystal type thing. Um, I'd like to have something at the top that's shiny. So 
can just put my beads. I do about three beads. You could do more. You could do none if you didn't want to. If you didn't want to put any more, you didn't have to. And I may have cut this a little bit short. Because I forgot I was putting my butterfly on. Okay, so now the reason for the butterfly is to kind of like make the beads not go anywhere. So the way you do the butterfly is I go in the bottom one. Put the fish, I put the fishing line on the back side. I position this to kind of where I want it because this is not going to move. It's going to tighten it up. I don't know what, what technical term that is, but it's not really going to slide across. This butterfly is not going to really slide against my, uh, I'm going in the back side. I may have cut it just a tad short, but that's okay. Going in the back side, pulling it taut. And there we go. That's what we end up with. We end up with that. Isn't that pretty? Let's get into the back side. My fishing line is running through the back side. And it doesn't really want to move. See, for some reason, when I do the butterfly that way, I mean, I could have just put a hole in the center and had the butterfly just land like that way on it. But for some reason, this keeps the beads all in place this way. So that's what I chose to do for now. Pretty much it keeps the beads in place. Had a little more slack in it than I thought I had. So let me pull it tart, taut. Pull it taut. Oopsie. Just got to get this the right way for a minute. Pull it taut. And then to finish it off, what I will do is I will get out another crimp bead. And I'm sorry, I don't know what size crimp beads they are. They're bigger ones. Um, I just don't know. Wait a minute. Maybe this will tell me. They are 2.5 millimeter crimp beads. So that's about the size you want. 2.5 millimeters. That's a good thing to know because I need to order some because I don't have a lot of the big ones. So 2.5 millimeter crimp beads is what you want to use to crimp um, to crimp these together. I mean to finish off the so I got one of them out. And then for my hangy dabby thing, I took the the thing on the on the pop top on the soda can and I have the double hole you know it has a double hole but I poked a hole I made a hole right there. So underneath that second hole, I took my hole puncher and I punched a hole in it right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. I hope you can see that. And I just punched a hole in it. That gives me a hole. So I put my I put my crimp bead on. And then I go through the hole I made. Go back through my crimp bead. I hope this crimp bead is big enough. Gotta pinch them together. Go back through my crimp bead, tighten this up. You want you don't want to you don't want to pull it super tight to that because you don't want you want that to be able to move a little bit. Because if you put it super tight, it might cut the fishing line. Let me undo this a little bit. Hold it together, grab my crimper, crimp the bead, it's crimped, it doesn't fill, but it's crimped. Then go back with my super glue, put a little dot of super glue just on that crimp, just a little dot, not a lot, you don't have to squeeze the bottle, just touch it, it'll come out. And now I have another wind chime, all made. I have another little wind chime made. And when the wind knocks it, that's the sound you're going to hear. So another happy wind chime made. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. This is my final effect. Um, again, the way I did the can was I painted a solid color paint. 
just spray painted it. Then I went back with craft paint and I painted a design on it. Whatever design you want. You probably could decoupage it too, but I'd really seal it good if you decoupage it. I give it two good coats of clear or something uh, if you did a decoupage on these. Um, I might decoupage a couple cans. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, I might do that. But make sure you coat it in clear. You know, nothing's to last forever. But you want, if somebody buys this, you want them to get a year or so or a couple years out of it. Two or three years would be great, you know. It will fade with time. It will get worn with time if they use it. But that's the finished project. Doesn't it look pretty? All right, I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember, art is to be creative, so go out there and create some art. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.